Quad 66. And Captain Rad here. And today we're doing a little comparison. So this is comparison of 1S um, flying on three inch props and a couple different motors. What are the motors, Ryder? Sky Stars. Yep, so Sky Stars. And FPV cycle. Yep, so these are Sky Star 1103, 11,000 kV. And obviously if we're talking about three inch, then we gotta talk about the FPV cycle. And these are 1202.5s, and these are 11,500 kV. And we didn't fly this one today, but I've got a pretty good feel for what it does. And this is the pyro drone version of the Sky Stars motor. So this is the Hyperlite, and it's 1103, 12,600 kV motor. Um, so what we flew today, though, we flew some back to back with um, these two quads, both of them on the 3018 props. Both of them be bearing brushless boards and flying on uh, 500 milliamp batteries. And let's talk about what would you feel, Ryder? No, well, first, overall impressions. Who's the winner? Okay. That's an easy decision, and it's going to be the Sky Star motor. Really? Yes. Really? Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. And I agree. I'm surprised. I actually do agree. Okay. 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 So let's let's see why. And by the way, what's so funny about and I just moved your set. Sorry, Ryder, messed up your set. What's so funny about this is we did not talk about what was the winner before right now. So I'm I'm really interested to see how come you like the Sky Stars motor better. He just felt so locked in. Hmm. And the FPV cycle motor guy. Mm -hmm just felt so drifty and uh i was flying them a while ago and i also had the impression mm -hmm. when you you had to put the throttle all the way down because mm -hmm. when you're in the air back then he seemed pretty sensitive with the throttle so mm -hmm. if you went up and in, into your neutral position yeah he would just fly out of the place so you had to cut your throttle and you would still like be at medium height. So he would, you had a hard time getting him down. Like he'd get floaty on you. Yeah, yeah. very, very, very floaty. And then, um, so, so you felt he, so you felt that the 1103s were more locked in, less floaty. Um, the big difference I felt between these, um, so I didn't think it was a clear cut. I think clear cut, well, not clear cut, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, between these things, the 1103s, what I liked about them is how much more responsive they were. And I think that this is what you're feeling when you're talking about kind of feeling locked in, is that when I go ahead and pitch and, and roll, and especially on the yaw, the yaw axis is where you feel it the most, is this responds a whole lot quicker. And I think it has to do with, maybe it's a function of the motor some, but it also might be just the pure mass of the motor. So the Skystar motors, if you weigh them out, they are 3.4 grams. And the um, FPV cycle motors are 4.3 grams, so it's a full gram difference, and it's not just a, or well, it's just short of a full gram, but it's a gram difference way out at the end of the quad, and that puts a lot of leverage. So you're dealing with four extra grams out at the periphery of the quad, and that makes a big difference in how it responds. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and so I, I felt that. The where, where the 1103s gave up a little bit though, was on the very top end. So when you're doing the full punch out, which one did you feel got higher, Ryder? The, the 1202.5s or 1103? Full punch out, just getting up there as high as you can. Probably the FPV cycle, although my battery was a little bit low. Oh, I put you on the bad battery for the FPV cycle. It doesn't, it sags a little bit more on full punch out. No, on this guy, my battery was like, pretty low when I did a punch out. Oh, uh, when you did a punch out. Gotcha. But okay. I guess this guy would go higher then? I don't know. Yeah, so the 1103 or the 1202.5s keep pulling a little bit longer than 1103 with the asterisk. That's on the 11,000 11, kV. When you bump up to the Pyrodron Hyperlites with the 12,600 kV, these actually pull harder longer than the FPV cycle motors. And um, there's enough- Hang on a second. You were right about it being the bad battery on the FPV cycle, actually. Whoops. Well, it wasn't, it's not a bad battery, but it's, it's their older, or older Yeah. Battery. Yeah, yep. 
Okay, so um, and we do have good, so from thrust data, so from carlpablo.com, he's got thrust data, and he compares the FPV cycle motors and the Pyrodrone Hyperlight versions, and the, the two motors, the, um, if you go on the same prop of the 3018, you, you can draw a little more amps with the Hyperlights, but if you kind of calculate out the weight and take everything into account, these are just going to outperform they've got a bigger performance envelope than the 1202.5s. So um, other things, the, in general, when, what that means is that when I'm flying these, this, even though it has less top end, so if you're flying in a big open space, you might be a little bit less impressed, but if you're flying in tighter spaces, I felt the 1103s just felt more nimble, more quick, and although they kind of ran out of legs up at the top end, it was actually more fun to fly, and I was kind of surprised about that, and on top of that, I think, and I can't do a great comparison, I'll talk about it when I do the review on the B-Brain brushless board. I can't compare the efficiency directly, but, because um, of some issues. But on on this build with the 525 milliamp battery, I was getting pretty easily like almost six minutes of flight time, and the 1202.5 is more like five minutes, which is, it's pretty interesting that um, you're not giving up a whole lot of performance and get uh, that much more efficiency. Okay. But with all this said, Ryder, what's the big issue that we discovered today? I knew about this a little bit, or I had suspicion about this before, but what'd you discover about the Sky Stars? Um, I don't exactly know. How many batteries did you fly on the Sky Stars? One. One. And the motors takes one crash to break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yep. that was such a bad moment. So, yeah, Ryder put a little kill shot in on the metal fence. But come on, really? Like, we're, we're... It, I wouldn't say it's a hard a hard enough hit to de even destroy a normal motor. Yeah, so realistically speaking, I have put way more, and Ryder has too, we've, we've beat these motors up way more and they haven't failed from crashes. Now I've had some issues with the um, shaft loosening from the bell on two motors, so that's two out of 10. Um, Rugi kind of claimed that they didn't do that, but they did, I'm two out of 10 on it now. Um, and, but bashing these, I haven't, none of these motors have failed from bashing and it kind of makes sense when, remember we talked about this, look at the size of that metal ring that there, I mean, that, that thing's beefy. And plus you got an extra gram of motor on the other hand, the Sky Stars are more like these little whippet motors, right? And that mm -hmm. ring, pretty thin. And so I killed one motor, similar thing. It was, yes, it's a metal fence, but really and truly, like, I killed one of these, you killed one of these, and our failure rate is, is definitely higher. So how do we declare a winner out of that? FPV cycle would we'll take that award and that's it that takes the work. <laughs> i think so so the point is if if really you just want to stay in the air i think the fpv cycle motor if yes. you just yeah if you just want to stay in the air and you'd like to bash fpc P cycle motor or if you don't really care if you like the mellow feel this is a really mellow flying clap um, quad. It is, I think, pretty easy to fly. It does drift a little bit more. It is a little bit less locked in. Maybe the tune can help. Um, but these 1103s, I think if you're going to fly them, and if you're flying any proximity close stuff, I, I think you're going to have to be ready to replace them. And the nice part about that is these motors are crazy cheap. I think I got them for like six bucks a piece, but mm. they came from China and it took me three months. So that's kind of an issue all on its own. Now, second question is, let's move these to the side. Second question, Rod, you didn't fly these hyperlights as much, but there's like a second issue on, should you go for the hyperlight 12,600 kV or should you go for the Sky Stars 11,000 kV? The nice part about the Sky Stars is I like that they don't have a clip up top and the prop sits nice and flush on the top on that flat part right there on the pyrodrome and the hyperlights they have a clip and i think the prop doesn't sit quite as well on that you can pull that off but then the other issue is in um obviously we killed one of each of these so maybe it's not the main failure point but anytime you put a 
notch there where that clip is, you're going to weaken the shaft. So that's something to consider. Um, in terms of who, like, would you fly this? This motor is efficient enough, particularly if you fly it on the 3018s, and I think people would be totally happy with that. If you're all about hands down performance, um, then the 12,600 kV. If you want a little bit longer flight times, 11,000 kV. One other thing to consider is these have these little teeny tiny screws. Um, they're M1 point something. I don't think it's six. I think it's like M1.8. It's something funny. It does fit into the regular, um, and it's also narrower too. It's like a 8.6 diameter. It does because the two kind of cancel each other out. So you can mount it in the same mounting pattern as these M2 on nine millimeter diameter. So they fit into the same frame, but just know the screws that come with the Sky Stars are super short. So if you're on a two millimeter carbon frame, use some Loctite and be careful because you don't have a whole lot of thread going into that or get some longer screws. And obviously that's maybe easier said than done sometimes. Versus the Hyperlites, you got those M2 screws, easy to get nice long ones and um, easy to use with a two millimeter thick frame. Oh, other factor on these is if you really like the um, uh, the HQ3015 props, you need the higher KV. You need 12,600 KV. With the 3015, this prop just doesn't have enough KV, and it just does a whole lot of nothing on the top end. It just doesn't get you anywhere. On the other hand, flying it with the 3018, you've got enough pitch there to where it's got enough top end that I think it's satisfying. It's not, it's not gonna blow you away, but I think it's satisfying. On the other hand, with 12,600 KV, you can throw that 38 on, 3018 on there with the gem fan, or you can fly the HQ3015. It turns both of those props nicely. And it's just a little bit of difference there of what you wanna deal with. Do you want the nice smoothness of the gem fan? And are you okay dealing with a little bit of the spool up issue? A little bit less resolution at the low throttle? or um, do you want to do, do the HQ where you get a little bit better bite on them, a little bit of better uh, low throttle resolution. I think they're a little grippier, but they're hit or miss. Some of them vibrate. Some of them vibrate terribly to where it's like, I'm kind of sick of them. And uh, personally, I'm leaning towards just getting the gem fans dialed in as best I can because overall, the overall experience feels a little bit better because I'm not dealing with unbalanced props every other prop change. Okay, out a uh, one question for you. Yep. Out of these, uh, these two motors, yep. which one would you say would break easier? I think they break the same. So these two are effectively the same motor. So I think Sky Stars or whoever makes it for Sky Stars makes both of these motors. They're, as far as I can tell, nearly identical with the difference of. They look the same. Yeah, the Pyro Drone has a little clip on the shaft. The Sky Stars doesn't. And then the Sky Stars has these smaller, I think they're M1.8 screws on 8.6 millimeter diameter. And, uh oh, <laughs> no, stop, don't go crazy with it. Um, versus the Pyrodrone motor has has the clip. It's got the two millimeter, M2, put, put it in the frame rider. Right? It's got the M2, the bottom, this part. It's got the M2 screws with nine millimeter. So I think these are both fragile and they're both problematic from that perspective. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay. Well. So it's a mess, but do what you will with that information. <laughs> the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and fly these on 2S. Um, they may work. I've got one more motor, fortunately, and I'm not gonna let Ryder fly it until I've got my testing in and then he can kill him. Fly them if you want to, go crazy with them if you want to take a risk of killing your brand new motor. Yeah, just if you're gonna buy them, buy like 10. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. It was just take. Anything oh. else? We're going too long. What do you think? Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. Done. Till next time. Cheers. Cheers.